High above Earth, two spacecraft share the same sky, but not the same fate. One China's Shenzhou-20 is stranded in orbit after a suspected collision with space debris. The other SpaceX's Crew Dragon, gliding safely through the same dangerous zone thanks to systems that can see and dodge what others can't. Both travel faster than a bullet. Both face a storm of invisible metal fragments racing around the planet. Yet only one had the technology to move out of harm's way in time. So what makes the difference? Why did the Chinese spacecraft get trapped while the American one escaped untouched? Find out everything in today's Tech Map episode. On November 5th, after completing a six-month mission aboard the Tiangong Space Station, three Chinese astronauts were ready to return home. But their descent was suddenly postponed. The reason engineers believed the spacecraft might have been struck by space debris. Since that moment, teams on the ground have been running continuous simulations, safety checks, and system tests. Every system has been analyzed, every response rehearsed. What makes this case remarkable is the openness surrounding it. China has publicly confirmed the incident, something rarely seen in its space program. That level of transparency suggests just how serious the situation might be. But how dangerous can a small piece of space debris really be? Space might look vast and empty, but in low Earth, orbit speed changes everything. Objects travel at about 8 kilometers per second, almost 28,000 kilometers per hour, faster than a bullet. At that velocity, even a one millimeter fragment of metal can release more energy than a gunshot. Now imagine what happens when that fragment hits a spacecraft. The result can range from a minor surface impact to catastrophic damage. And this isn't the first time such threats have appeared. In 2023, a solar panel on China's space station was damaged. A year later, astronauts had to perform spacewalks to install extra protection. Now in 2025, the Shenzhou 20 finds itself caught in the same danger. This problem isn't unique to China. In 2021, SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule had its own close call when a piece of debris passed near it during the Crew 2 mission. NASA and SpaceX reacted swiftly, instructing astronauts to secure themselves in the capsule. The debris missed, but it was a reminder of how fragile safety in orbit truly is. Both the Shenzhou 20 and Crew Dragon incidents reveal the same truth, low Earth orbit is becoming a minefield. No matter how advanced our spacecraft are, the risks remain. It's like driving through a storm of invisible shrapnel, no one is ever completely safe. Yet the Shenzhou 20 situation also highlights a deeper difference between nations. The United States relies heavily on much more advanced systems equipped on Dragon that constantly track and predict debris paths. China's systems are still developing facing both technical and political challenges. The result is a contrast in how each nation prepares responds and shares information in the face of one of space's growing dangers. The U.S. operates a vast network of radars and telescopes spread across continents and orbit. These instruments scan the skies every second, tracking hundreds of thousands of pieces of debris. NASA, together with the U.S. Space Force, maintains one of the most detailed catalogs of objects circling Earth, sharing that data with partners like SpaceX and other international agencies. This network enables highly accurate predictions and the ability to avoid danger before it strikes. China's tracking network is smaller and more centralized. It relies mainly on its domestic telescopes and a growing fleet of sensors in low Earth orbit. Its space situational awareness system is designed primarily to protect Chinese satellites and the Tiangong space station. However, its global coverage is more limited. Even so, China has been steadily expanding its capabilities, working on new sensors and building stronger links with international partners. The Tiangong station itself plays a central role in this effort. 
It is fitted with instruments capable of detecting debris larger than 10 centimeters. The crew of Shenzhou 20 has taken part in four spacewalks focused on reinforcing the station's shielding, an effort that began after a 2023 incident when a piece of space debris struck a solar panel and caused a temporary power loss. Engineers later installed new layers of protection on Tiangong's outer structure to defend it from future impacts. Still, China's approach remains more focused on passive defense building stronger shields and reinforcing spacecraft, while the United States and its partners rely on proactive maneuvers to avoid collisions altogether. NASA and SpaceX use continuous real-time tracking, supported by data from the U.S. Department of Defense and allied space networks. These systems allow SpaceX's crew, Dragon, and Starlink satellites to automatically adjust their orbits using thrusters, steering clear of predicted debris paths before they become a threat. Each maneuver is carefully planned in coordination with NASA Mission Control ensuring safety without interrupting ongoing missions. Aware of the limits of current technology, China is now investing in active debris removal systems, concepts that include robotic capture, towing, and controlled deorbiting. But such missions are costly and complex and still in the early stages of development. In the United States, SpaceX is also studying cleanup technologies, exploring bold ideas such as using its Starship vehicle to capture or redirect debris using nets, harpoons, or lasers. Both nations enforce strict debris mitigation rules. China requires its spacecraft to deorbit or lower their altitude at the end of their missions. SpaceX, meanwhile, designs its rockets and capsules to return safely to Earth, minimizing leftover debris. When the Dragon spacecraft re-enters the atmosphere, it uses advanced guidance systems to slow down steer and land precisely. Most components either burn up completely or splash down gently for reuse. This approach not only preserves hardware, but also keeps Earth's orbit cleaner and safer for future missions. For short, China's network is advancing, but it lacks the large-scale automation and global maneuvering capabilities already integrated into NASA and SpaceX systems. That gap helps explain why incidents like the Shenzhou 20 emergency have become a growing concern. For China, the challenges are not purely technical. Cost remains a major factor. A single debris removal mission can cost anywhere between 100 million and half a billion dollars. NASA estimates that using lasers to nudge debris out of orbit could run as high as a billion dollars per system. Every method, whether robotic arms nets or propulsion systems, requires precision fuel and time. There are also national security concerns. China closely guards its space data, wary of revealing technologies that could have military applications. Much of what protects satellites can also target them, so secrecy remains a strategic choice. The downside is reduced international cooperation and less access to shared debris tracking data. In the United States, laws like the Wolf Amendment restrict NASA from working directly with China on space projects without special authorization. The goal is to prevent sensitive technologies from being transferred. Yet this separation has also led to two very different systems evolving side by side, one built on secrecy, the other on collaboration. Of course, an incident like this cannot be left to mere technicalities it immediately sparked a heated debate online about who was responsible. One of the first lines of thought to emerge was historical irony. Many recalled China's 2007 anti-satellite missile test, which created thousands of pieces of debris. The question is whether they themselves are the victims of the space junk they created in the past. There are also more optimistic views. They hope that this will be a wake-up call when they themselves become victims, perhaps China will become more serious and even take the lead in solving the problem of space illusions. 
but there is no shortage of harsh criticism. They argue that based on statistics, China is one of the countries that produces the most space junk. So according to them, this is not a random accident, but a foreseeable consequence. And of course, there is a bit of skepticism. Some people hypothesize whether the cosmic accident is just a perfect cover that comes in handy for any other potentially embarrassing failures. Because the cosmic accident is unpredictable, it is very difficult to verify. I'm not saying it wasn't a piece of debris, but that can also be a convenient cover for other mishaps. The last time damage in space was blamed on impact from space debris, a second spacecraft suffered the exact same damage. Orbital debris cannot be predicted, so it's a perfectly useful cover for any other potentially embarrassing failure. So what's your take? Do you think space junk is just a perfect excuse? In this case, let me know in the comments. You know, I'm so interested in conspiracy theories. This debate also raises another issue media attention. Some people have commented that the Tiangong space station, such a major technological achievement, has barely been mentioned in the Western media until something bad happens. And here is an interesting statistic compiled. It shows the number of articles about Tiangong in November. Newspapers in Hong Kong, like the South China Morning Post, have reported a lot, but major newspapers in the US have less. Meanwhile, no newspapers in the UK or Australia have reported it. This shows that our view of space is also influenced by a geopolitical prism. Okay, so after all the blame shifting, the most important question is, what can we do? Fortunately, the discussion has moved beyond criticism and into finding practical solutions. There are three main directions that have been put forward. One is the standardization of technology, specifically docking ports, so that ships from one country can rescue ships from another. Two is the global law, which requires clear international regulations to limit the creation of additional space junk. And three, perhaps the most difficult, is to be the one to clean up the trash. The first idea and standardization of technology already exist. It is called IDSS. It can be imagined as a standard USB port for all spacecraft. Both the ISS and Tiangong have adopted this standard. It allows ships from different countries to connect to each other in case of an emergency.